Welcome everyone to the OpenE webinar. This topic is going to be about updating your RAID controllers firmware. So we want to be able to show you some uh, variances of the different controllers that are out there today. And what we're going to do is we're going to check out the current firmware, how to do that, locate the newest firmwares from the vendors, and then we're going to upload the firmwares and of course at the last step reboot the DSS. So what we want to do first is let's go ahead and take you to the DSS. What I have is three DSS servers, and what I'm showing you here is we want to be able to identify the controller. Many of you already know. Uh, so there are some many cases, though, engineers come on to a company brand new, and they're trying to figure out what does the system have. And so this is where we're able to get this information. Uh, you go to status and then hardware settings. And if you're on DSS v6, it's going to be uh, just status hardware. And what you're going to get is the list coming right up on this screen. It's right below the UPS status, and it shows controller information. So this server is going to be the Intel RAID controller that I have that's on my Intel server. Now, on my other DSS that I show here, I am using the LSI. So this is the 9265-8i controller. And on this DSS server, I have two RAID controllers. One is a three-ware. Uh, which is the 9690SA, and of course I got the Eureka controller underneath that at the 1680. Uh, when we start, let's start with the first one. Let's go back to this DSS where it's showing the Intel controller. Now to be able to get to that and update the firmware, you're going to need the Mega Raid Storage Manager. Here I've already loaded it up for you. So what we're looking at is we see the integrated RAID module that was presented on the screen of the DSS V7. And we also see the firmware versions and the build time and so forth. And really, we want to be able to search for that firmware. And sometimes not all these sites are that easy. So I brought this attention to everybody. So I brought up all three, uh, all four sites. And we'll start off with the first one, an Intel site. Um, I found it a little difficult trying to navigate, but I finally figured out their support. And it's a lot, it's a little busy, but you can muddle through it. Here we have the same RAID controller. There's a lot of information here, but what you want to do is go right here to where it says download drivers, uh, downloads and drivers. And so here you'll be able to select the firmware and then from there scroll on down and locate the latest one. So I've already downloaded the firmware, but here's the information uh, that you can go ahead and, and be able to click on here and then proceed to download the firmware for the Intel RAID controller or whichever RAID controller you have. So what we'll do is go back to the Mega RAID Storage Manager. By the way, Intel also has the um, what's called the Intel uh, RAID Web Console tools, but it's really an LSI controller. So you can use the Mega RAID Storage Manager to update an Intel controller, uh, an LSI, and even a PowerEdge RAID controller since they're all OEM from LSI. Once you get in here, you can either select the physical and right click and then select update controller firmware, or you can even go to the logical section, right click and update controller firmware. So now in their firmware version that I've downloaded, I created a directory and here we'll call, I put the firmware in the Intel directory and it's a ROM file and I'm going to select OK, confirm and let that continue. So that's going to update the system. It, it'll tell you when it's done and then you're going to need to reboot the DSS to have that firmware take effect. Now on the next server that I have, we're going to go over to the LSI controller. So here I have the 9265. Um, you can, again, on all the hardware RAID controllers for the Intel LSI and the PowerEdge RAID controller, you can always go into setup hardware RAID and be able to configure your arrays and set up for different values for your um, rebuild rates, prior uh, patrol read rates and check your consistency rates as well. And you can put place these values. I don't normally like to see customers have these increased up to 90% because you're going to use a lot of performance at that point and you'll lose it. Um, so you want to be able to keep it at 30% only when you have a rebuild that is going on yeah, you might want to make sure that no one else is on the system. Then you can go ahead and increase that to 90 to 100 percent on your rebuild and reconstruction rates. Okay, so for this LSI controller, we're going to need to use the 
log into the Mega Rate Storage Manager. Here I've already brought it up. We're going to need to log in on this IP address to get into the um, Mega Rate Storage Manager for that controller. You can change the password, but the default is RAID RAID. So let's go ahead and enter that in. Okay, give it a second to load. So here we have the physical device. We see the 9265. We're going to go ahead and update that controller firmware. So you just right click and then select update controller firmware. Now we'll select the file where it's located at. So I put it in my firmware directory. And this is for the LSI controller. So we'll select this for the Mega 8 2208. We're going to confirm it. And again, it'll let you know when it's done. So now let's go to the DSS with the two RAID controllers for three-wear. Oh, by the way, let's go back and, and talk about the uh, where I was able to get the firmware for the LSI controller. So you can't mix an Intel firmware with an LSI firmware. They're, they're independent. So just in case anybody has any questions about that, you want to make sure you get it specifically for what that card is uh, named for. So if it's a 9265, um, even though <clears throat> they might be a 9280, uh, 85, you want to make sure that you have the right firmware for the right controller. So here in LSI, it was pretty easy for me to navigate to find the 9265 firmware. They also outline it pretty cleanly here. So I kind of like LSI's presentation of uh, their software, their updates, their code sets, uh, where Intel was a little bit more difficult to navigate. Here you get right to it. So And they just outline it clearly as firmware. Um, here's the latest one. You can read it and, of course, download it. So now we'll go ahead and go back to the DSS and we'll start with the three-wear controller. So here I have a 9690SA uh, version. So I'm going to go to Setup and then I'm going to go to Hardware RAID. And here is the 3DM Utility Manager. So we're going to go click on this because it takes about a second to come up. There we go. We're going to select administrator. By the way, the password is 3WARE, 3-W-A-R-E, and it's not case sensitive. Well, it's lowercase. So you don't need to put uh, capitals. You can change the password uh, that's in the DSS. We're going to give that a second to load. So you can change it or reset it back to default uh, factory settings for the username and password. So now we're logged in. Here you're able to see the firmware. Uh, so we're able to identify uh, what firmware version uh, you have and what is updated. So let's go to 3 Wear site. In 3 Wear site, I found it a little difficult because even though LSI purchased 3 Wear, uh, I couldn't find the, um, the 9690 on LSI site. So I had to go to 3 Wear site and there, if you look at this, it's really confusing because you have to scroll all the way down to find the firmware version. And where I put it, I put a highlight on it. Here we go. So it's all the way down here. And of course, you download this zip file, unpack it, and of course, read the release notes. So this is the latest version for that release, as uh, right here 4.10.00007. Uh, now what we've done is we're going to back to into the three-wear controller. So here I've already uh, updated it. The I think we got the latest one on there. Let's verify. So we got firmware. Right. Okay. 07. And here we have 027. So we need to update that. What you do is you go into management, then controller settings and scroll all the way down and then we're going to select browse and we'll grab the three wear and there's your image file and it'll give you a warning and remember just because you're updating the firmware and once it's complete um, it doesn't mean that the firmware has uh, is, is active you have to reboot it for it to be uh, active the firmware into the ray controller so there is uh, some downtime you're going to need to do a reboot. Uh, just bear that in mind, especially in a production server. So we're going to let that cook in the oven. 
and then we're going to go ahead and go back to the DSS. And here we're going to work on the Arika RAID controller. So I scroll on down. So you can admit several RAID controllers, independent, different ones in the DSS. So and you can have many RAID controllers and configure them. Here we have the Arika controller. I'm going to select the Arika controller option right here, then click on the Arika button. Again, this is using a, a web browser that pops up similar to the Threeware. Uh, where LSI, Intel, and the PowerEdge RAID controller you can use to make a RAID storage manager. Okay, so let's look at what current version we have. So you want to go to information and then system information. And here's where we have the firmware version that is currently on the system. So now <clears throat> what, we, um, what I did basically is I had to look for that firmware. So I went to Arika's site. And Arika really doesn't pronounce the firmware title enough as you can see it's interesting how some of them uh, do a real good job I think uh, uh, LSI is really the winners at this and present presenting their firmwares clearly to identify which ones but here you have to if you don't if your eyes are blurry or something it's hard to look for it and they don't really pronounce that bold enough I would say but uh, here's where I have the 1680 and I was able to download the 1680 many many of you probably are going to be using the 1880 series or the new one the 1882 series uh, so this is where in Eureka's website you want to download the firmware okay so let's go back to the um, the Eureka here and I see that I'm needing to update because I got the 1.49 02. So let's go over here on the left under System Controls tab right here where this folder is. And all the way down the bottom is Upgrade Firmware. Now what's interesting about the Eureka is that there is more than one file to update the firmware. And I already did uh, three of them and I saved the last one for the presentation. But all these four for this Eureka uh, controller, you need to update each one of these. Now, this, you don't have to reboot on each one. You just have to complete all of them. Um, you don't want to mix different firmware versions. So let's say you did uh, this BIOS bin which for this firmware, because they're all associated, and you reboot, you could have some issues or it'll get hung. You have to power the system down. Uh, so the last one I have to put in is this one. So it's the 1680 firmware.bin. Uh, the other three I've already completed, so just to save time. And we're going to confirm the operation and then submit. And, of course, that takes a second for that to complete. Let's go over to 3Ware and see if it's finished, and we'll come back to the Eureka. Okay, so here on the 3Ware, it's showing that it has the new firmware. Um, they're all compatible and to proceed to update. So we'll click on that, and it just gives you a message that it's going to continue to work, and it's going to take several minutes. So as you can see, it's cycling. Go back to let's go back to the Eureka now, and here it's finally saying uh, the firmware has been updated successfully. Restart the controller is required. So bear that in mind, and I think that the threeware and the Eureka by far was really the, the easiest and the quickest from the web GUI standpoint, but the LSI, Mega Rate Storage Manager, is I think more versatile in that. Here again, it finished a one to show you that, um, again, LSI or Intel will tell you that the system needs to be rebooted. So they all really need to be rebooted. But what I like about the Mega Rate Storage Manager is I have a more granular, uh, detailed layout here that I can see the firmware, I, I notice my drives, so it's just a preference, I think. Um, the only RAID controller we did not show today is the Adaptic RAID controller. Uh, we'll probably show that in about several months from now. But uh, as you can see, this helps a lot of people to be able to update firmwares. That's about it. I want to thank everybody. And one more thing, don't forget, reboot the servers. So we're going to go ahead and just restart these. You can also do a scheduled restart. So let's say you are not going to be around and you're going to be leaving the office early so you can schedule a time to restart at let's say 6 p.m. so we'll go ahead and restart all the systems as they're ready to go
and that's about it. Thank you everybody for showing up and if you have any questions please email us at pre-sales at open-e.com. Take care. Bye-bye.